I think it's no secret that Instagram can be pretty brutal to small or new artists. And I want to share some things that can help you grow on Instagram. Uh, this has been a pretty highly requested topic from my followers. I'm not exactly a massive creator or anything, but I can definitely help show what's helped me to grow and the mistakes that I've made along my journey that you can avoid. But first, I just want to say, uh, creating art should always be driven by your passion. It's, it's so important not to fall into the trap of creating solely for the recognition. It's got to be something that you'll enjoy or you'll burn yourself out so quickly. I see creators do this all the time where an artwork or a piece of their content just blows up and they never stray from that format and they end up getting like trapped by it. So seriously, stay true to what you love and your right audience will naturally grow around your authentic work. Also, there's no like one size fits all uh, or step by step for growth. It will be different for everyone's journey and that's kind of the beauty in it. This video is just general pointers based on what helped me grow. That being said though, I would love to at some point go like more in depth into a sort of growth strategy in a video, like what you can be doing to maximize your growth along different points in your journey. Uh, if that's something you'd be interested in, just let me know. All right, let's actually get into the video now. <laughs> so right now I'm sitting at around 58,000 followers, which is by no means massive, but I feel like it's way more than what I could have asked for. Um, but actually, with that being said, I want to take a slightly different approach to growth. I personally don't just see it as having a high follower count, but having an engaging audience overall, which is not the same. First topic I want to talk about is kind of the mistakes I've made over my journey that you should definitely avoid. And I think the biggest mistake that so many people fall into is believing the myth that you need to be posting every day. Uh, I fell into this trap because there are so many people that will tell you it's super important to just always be posting all the time, but that's just not true. And I believed it for so long and it led me to constant burnout, low quality posts and super low engagement. If you try to do more than what you're comfortable with, the burnout will show. You won't be producing good work and you're not providing any value to your audience, so they'll get bored and they won't engage with you or just unfollow you entirely. Instead, you should focus on a posting schedule that you can keep up with without getting worn out. Uh, now I post twice a week and I'm no longer forcing myself to just pump out artwork. I don't get burnt out all the time and because of this my art quality has gone up massively and my engagement is much higher as well. The next mistake, and I mentioned this a little earlier in the video, believing that lots of followers is the same as growth. Stop obsessing over a follower count, don't get caught up in this numbers game. Uh, having a large follower count is not the sole indicator of growth, there's so much more to it than that. Engagement is super important, like what's the point of having millions of followers if 7 people are going to interact with your posts? In my eyes, engagement is actually a way better way to measure your growth in general. Uh, they kind of go hand in hand, but it's super easy to just put out a viral reel and suddenly gain thousands of followers. Keeping them engaged with the rest of your work is so much more valuable and takes time and effort. If you're gaining thousands of followers a day, but your engagement isn't changing, then you're not growing. It just looks like that from the outside. So I say if you're only looking at followers, then change your approach to it and focus on everything as a whole and not just the follower count. See how many people are actually interacting with you and try to cherish that. The next one, uh, this trap I see way too much and it's really dangerous if you want to build a long term audience that engages with you. This is trying to fit a specific mould. Avoid the feeling like you have to be funny or become a content creator quote unquote to grow. It's really common for creators to blow up by posting a specific type of content but then feeling trapped by that format. You should focus on doing what you love and let the right people grow around your authentic self. Don't sacrifice your true artistic expression for this short term gain. So many people end up going nowhere because something they post blows up and that becomes their entire personality. And you'll later try and post something that you actually want to post and see that nobody cares because you've built up this page of just what this particular audience wants to see. And when they inevitably get bored and move on to the next trendy thing, now you're back at square one. Now, I'm still doing the occasional funny gag, but it's no longer for the numbers, it's because I just enjoy being a little silly sometimes, you know? Like, at the same time, there's nothing wrong with being funny or being a content creator, right? But if it's not you, then don't force it, because it will get exhausting. Those were kind of like the main mistakes I wanted to go over. So now what should you do to grow an audience? First of all, engaging with people is everything. Uh, let's say you're just starting off, right? You can't expect to just post something and the algorithm to push it out to lots of people and the right people. 
I'm sure there are well over a billion accounts and that's probably an understatement. On top of this, the algorithm has no idea what kind of account you are at first. In the early stages, you need your right audience to find you. So go interact with people who create similar stuff. Artists love helping other artists, so build friendships, leave nice comments, don't be pushy though, nobody wants all that, please check out my account and follow me, I'm new stuff. Like, especially when it's the only interaction you have with people. It just makes you sound like a door-to-door -door salesperson and you really don't want that. Build genuine mutual friendships with people and you'll help each other out. By interacting with other art posts, you're also telling the algorithm to show your posts to artists and art lovers. So now once you've grown like a humble group of mutuals, you can interact with people directly on your page. Remember that your followers are real people and take the time to connect with them beyond just posting and disappearing. Instagram only shows your art to a fraction of your followers, which is, it's stupid, but <laughs> people who interact with you are much more likely to be shown your posts by the algorithm. You can use Instagram stories to show glimpses of your life, create polls and question stickers. Have fun with your audience. You should also definitely respond to comments and let your followers know how much you appreciate them. I also like to look at my followers' art pages and leave nice comments for them. Uh, follow people back, keep building friendships. For me, that's the most enjoyable part of having a platform anyway. So another great way to interact with your fans is events like draw this in your style challenges, art challenges in general actually. Uh, challenges are great because your audience is sharing the challenge by participating. Uh, reaching a wider audience for both you and your followers. Again, you help each other out and I love that. Artist support posts as well. You're helping your followers grow, they engage with you and you're growing together. So another great way to grow, and we're branching slightly outside of Instagram here, make use of other platforms like TikTok, Twitter, even places like Pinterest and Reddit. Now it is important not to spread yourself thin, you should still have like a main platform where you post your stuff and are most active. Uh, in this case we're talking about Instagram, you can drive fans from other platforms to help you reach a much larger audience. For example, some of my art blew up on TikTok a while back, and I used that to let people know that I mainly post art on Instagram, and that brought thousands of people to my Instagram page who are ready to engage. Now, like I said, you shouldn't try to post absolutely everywhere. Find what works for you by experimenting. Uh, I like to use just Instagram and TikTok as my main platforms, for example, but I also sometimes post on Twitter and Reddit. I also use YouTube to bring a different kind of content and that takes much longer to create. I'm kind of experimenting with that right now. Uh, I've experimented with lots of different platforms and stuck with the ones that work for me and I recommend you do the same. Also try to use the same name across all your platforms, it makes it so much easier for people to find you when they're searching for you. Now let's look at some of the features that Instagram has that you can use to grow. It's got three main ways to share your stuff, you've got your reels, your posts and your stories and you can use all three of these to expand your reach. So you've got Reels, which is kind of Instagram's newest way to share your stuff. It's been around for quite a while now, and it's kind of the best way to reach new people. This is just because Instagram tends to push them out more. They're much more likely to go viral than any other format. They don't even have to be anything complicated. They can just show a part of your art process or just feature some artworks you've done in the past. At the same time, people tend to think that you need to be posting reels all the time, which is not true. It's a great way to reach new people, like I've said, but you don't need to be posting them nearly as much as people think you do. Like nowadays, I post a reel maybe every one to three weeks, and my growth is still fine, and actually my engagement is way better than it ever has been. So onto our next format, which is posts, and this is the one that's been around for the longest. Posts, in my experience, are the best way to reach your current audience and keep them engaged. You can also use reels and posts kind of hand in hand by showing some of the process for your posts and putting art from the posts into reels. But yeah, I use posts to, well, basically just post my art. I also use posts for things like challenges, artist support stuff, uh, stuff I mentioned earlier in the video. I also hear that carousel posts get pushed more, um, which is basically where you have more than one image or video in the same post and you can swipe through them. I guess that's because your audience just stays longer on the post by swiping through the images. And the final format we got is stories, and this is a very different one. Uh, basically you can just show behind the scenes snippets of your daily life, uh, post polls and question stickers. You can really interact with your audience through stories as well by showing like your human side. These only stay up for 24 hours unless you highlight them, so you really don't have to overthink these. It's just a great way to bond with your audience. So yeah, the main thing is, uh, no matter how good you are, growing as an artist takes time and effort, especially with how saturated social media is. 
but it's definitely possible. You just need to be super patient. So avoid these common mistakes, uh, focus on building genuine connections, make use of the features that Instagram has. And remember that follow account is not equal to just growing an audience. Really just stay true to your passion and enjoy the process. I hope this video helped you in some way on your journey as an artist and uh, subscribe, please, please, please. Ah! Don't sacrifice your true autistic expression for <laughs> Did I say? <laughs> uh!